Um, if you only take away two things, get that document reviewed by a local lawyer. I don't care if you're dealing in Pakistan, Bangladesh, Taiwan. It's just so valuable to have the, the, the contract in local language. And you might be thinking, someone's going to raise their hand and ask, so I'll sort it out now. Well, can I put in the English language contact, contract that English is the, the uh, you know, is the formal language, is the official language of this contract? Sure you can. And then this is what's happened to me. The, the defendant, the Chinese supplier's lawyer, killed one year by debating every word in my contract if the translation was correct or not by the, the court-appointed translator. So if it was in Chinese originally and the supplier signed off, meaning they agree that this Chinese terminology is accurate, they can't use the stall tactic of debating if your English language contract is translated correctly when, the, when it goes to court. All right, I've said it twice, I'll say it a, th a third time. Please make sure that the name on your contract is the same name on the bank account, business license, and ideally the factory gate. Um, I've got lots of questions. I hope you have lots of questions for me because we have a full 10 minutes left. Uh, um, just some more resources for you. The information center at the top, that's the blog that I write for buyers who purchase under 100,000 US dollars a year. The advanced buyer blog for buyers that purchase over a million dollars is at, uh, well it says advanced buyer blog. The sourcing service center is where you can find like inspections, lawyers, um, third party support. And then there's a great website that I mentioned yesterday called Supplier Blacklist, where buyers are helping each other by basically exposing suppliers who have done them wrong. You know, the, the <clears throat> open secret is that most of the mega website directories, they make their money from the sellers who list on those directories. So yeah, you know, an Alibaba Global Sources does a great job of trying to vet those suppliers, but a great su supplier can go bad overnight. So, and those suppliers are paying to be listed. So they really have to be pretty bad in order to get knocked off of the, um, these, these website directories. So the website supplier blacklist isn't making any money from the suppliers so they can just expose everything in an open way. All right, let's go back to, I'll leave this on there, but I'll open up the microphone to question and answer. We have about five minutes and uh, we have a microphone coming around. Th thank you for your time.